Welcome back to the Dividend Diplomats YouTube channel, guys. You've got your boys, Bert and Lanny, the DD here, guys. Hope you guys got your coffee poured. I know Bert's got his. I've got mine. Cheers. Good morning. Let's stay hungry. Let's stay invested because that's what this video is about. No matter what the stock market is doing, you know we are finding ways to make sure we are staying invested and consistently invested regardless of that noise that's happening out there. That's right. But before we do, before we enjoy this conversation today, subscribe to our channel. Give this video a thumbs up. We're also putting in that comment section, that reference section below, where to follow us outside of YouTube as well. So we got YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and Threads, baby. We got them all. We're one of the 70 million that just signed up for it. So feel free to pop over, follow us. 70 million now? Yeah. They, 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 I was going to say they tweeted it out. They threaded it out. Um, 70 million signups in, I think, 48 hours on that platform. Cheers. That's, about, that's the same number of subscribers that we have. Yeah, that's right. Hmm. It's like they stole our idea. Maybe they didn't just hire Twitter's engineers, but they also copied our idea, too. All right. But well, yeah, guys, we appreciate the love, guys. All right. So we're digging in here, guys. Again, I hope you have your coffee poured. This is going to be more of a discussion here, again, about how we're staying invested, no matter what the S&P 500, no matter what news economic data is coming out, no matter where mortgage rates are, no matter what the Fed's doing, no matter what Papa Powell wants to do, and no matter who Elon Musk wants to sue, we're always buying. ABB, always be buying. You know, Bert, give me a little bit of background, too, on why this makes sense. It does, because the reality is we don't know what's happening with the stock market. The stock market always reminds me of that uh, that office clip where Michael's talking about, do you know how hard it is to get vasectomies reversed? And he's going, snip, snap, snip, snap, snip, snap. Because that's really what's going on with the stock market is every single, I wouldn't even say every single week anymore. It's every single day. Every day there's a new piece of news in the market that is causing yields to go up, market to go down tomorrow oh my gosh things are different the the opposite thing happened let's reverse it yields are coming down stock market's going up nobody can really predict what's happening with the stock market nobody can predict what's happening tomorrow the next week so it's causing a little bit of chaos and stocks are getting punished on some days rewarded on others it's absolute insanity but that's why the consistent investing is so important because you take the noise out and you know that no matter what whether it's a good day whether it's a bad day I'm going to have some strategy that's going to allow me to constantly get the cash off the sidelines and into the market. And 10 years from now, it's not going to matter what my purchase price was. I'm going to be happy that I built that portfolio today, the next week, and the week after that to get that position growing and compounding. Oh, I mean, yeah, 100%. Bird hit it on the head. Can't predict tomorrow. Can barely predict next hour. So we're buying no matter what. And your future self is going to say... Nice job. Nice job. Pat's on the back here, guys. So we're going to talk about what we've been doing, what we kind of hold ourselves accountable, what Bert and his wife hold that, them accountable for, and kind of what we do in here in my household. So, you know, to just dig right in, this one's kind of like the no-brainer. You know, with Vanguard, you know, my wife and I were pretty dedicated to no matter what, buying ETFs. Um, again, we're still buying a bunch of individual stocks. Check out all of those previous purchase videos. But this is an automatic strategy that we have. You know, she buys two shares of Vanguard's high dividend yield ETF, VYM, which yields about 3.15 to 3.3%. Um, and we've just been buying shares. So she's got two. I do 300 on Mondays and currently do an extra 150 um, when I can on Wednesdays. Um, so, you know, in total there, when you do the math, maybe a little four plus shares for me, two plus shares for her. So about six shares plus total. Um, and then we're also buying the S&P 500 BOO um, from Vanguard every single day, $60. And then I'm buying dividend appreciation ETF from Vanguard BIG. That is $40 a day that we're currently doing. So no matter what, that is set it and forget it. It is growing and we are doing it. And that keeps our savings rate and investing rate high because I don't want to go one week, two weeks, three weeks trying to time a purchase. I want to know, okay, I wake up, the passive income is growing, period. Yeah. So just to help put some perspective on that as we're going through it, say you're buying six shares of UIM right now. 
that's a hundred that's a, a about a hundred hundred five dollars per share ish give okay. or take so that's automatically at least six hundred plus dollars going in right there from the VYM and you gave the dollar amounts for the other two so it's a much more set thing so that's at least a thousand plus dollars every single week going into this Vanguard trifecta and those are real dollars and those dollars make an impact no matter what so that's the beauty of it it's if you think about it, VYM weather this week, it's a, it just ended 10450 something. So that's going to be what you get on Monday when it opens up, most likely. Yeah. Next week, whether it's $107, it really doesn't matter. If it's the, or if it goes down, it's 102, it really doesn't matter. It's not going to have that material of an impact on your uh, cost base and your overall investment when you're looking at it in 2033. It, it won't matter. The important thing is yeah. you're doing it. Just doing it, building it, reinvesting it, dripping it. So, guys, that's that's kind of like the no brainer stuff that I'm doing. And, you know, Bert, what you know, what are you and your wife doing? Again, to reiterate, what are you guys doing every week? Yeah, so we don't have as much on the automatic investment front up front. Our strategy is slightly different from that sense. Before, it was at least a hunt, one share of Johnson and Johnson every week. So that was about 160, 170 in each of our portfolios going in. We replaced that once we reached. The 100 share mark for Johnson Johnson, my wife are doing two shares in SCHD, which right now is around 72, 73. So that's about 140-ish going in. And then I find one stock in my portfolio over the weekend that I just want to add between 150 and $200 in and add to that individual position. So we have an automated strategy, but it's kind of for sure one ETF and then ad hoc plus based on what I'm feeling from there. Some weeks it's been Tyson, some weeks it's been Leggett and Pot, some weeks it's been Qualcomm. It doesn't matter. Like sometimes it can just be whatever stock I look at looks undervalued based on the metric and say, screw it, I want to add to it. So that's a guaranteed at least. Screw it, I want to add to it, guys. That's a yeah. good quote right there. Put that on the put that on the coffee mug. That that should that should be one that pops in the diplomat store. What you know, add a comment down there if you'd want something like that. You if you'd want an always be buying coffee mug, if you'd want a um if you'd want to screw it, add to it, we'll just put that there. Maybe we can get one of those popped up in the store. Let us know your feedback on that. We'd love to hear it. Um, so it's it's different. And we still haven't found one specific thing yet with the ETFs. But my wife, I want to get her to 100 shares of SCHD before we reevaluate. She's in the six, high 60s, low 70s right now based on the strategy. And myself, I'll still wait to see what I'm exactly feeling. If I want to find one stock like J&J, or if I want to just find an ETF that I want to do too. It's I haven't settled on one specific one yet. Yeah. So, and then there's other stocks that I always have on my radar that, again, I'm trying to get to a hundred shares, but just trying to add when I know the stocks are being, you know, been beaten down. So for me, it's like UPS. If UPS hovers around that 170 or down mark, um, you know, I'll probably try to buy a share. You know, CVS, if I see them crack below $69, $68 a share, I'm probably going to try to get to 100 that way. Um, yeah, Pfizer. If Pfizer is currently, I think, under $36 a share. I think Bert ripped five new shares um, last week. So, again, I think there's a lot of value there. There's still a revenue pharmaceutical engine. Um, so, Tyson, as Bert said, if they're under 50, probably looking to add there. So, I have my automatic ETS, but then I'm looking at these individual stock opportunities right now where I am completely comfortable just based on track record and, you know, kind of revenue, what they do, um, knowing that more than likely they'll still be around. Um, so I'm trying to add and trying to get to, again, I love the hundred share mark. Um, so yeah, those are the stocks that I'm always kind of right now have on the radar that are near those prices that I'm like, okay, this is where I can start picking off. Yeah. And that's really what I do throughout the week too, is I just, I can just open up my brokerage and know I like it at this price. I've done the research ahead of time and I'm just ready to strike. Screw it. I want to add to it. I could keep saying that accidentally, but that's really how I feel about it. For me right now, I can just break through some of them. For my wife at Citibank in the 45, 46 or lower, um, that's one Huntington. I'll keep adding to my position when it's ten dollars per share or lower like in the, the low tens or lower uh realty income under sixty dollars we put that one out oh. video i'm adding to that one in my roth when it's 60 or below t row price my wife's building a position there t row price i look at when it's in the hundreds per share so below 110 or lower i'll nibble and add a piece of t row 
Tyson under 50, like I said, Pfizer under 36. I'm with you on that one, Lanny. I think that's a great value right now. The last one is Leggett and Plot under $30 per share. I'll just continue nibbling and continue adding. And I think the beauty of it is like what the one like Leggett and Plot is, um, $30 isn't much. Like it's a very easy one to pick up one share at a time. That's just, that's not a ton of money to throw at one. So that's why I like adding that. Did you get to 100 shares with Leg? 200. 200. Oh, We're at 200 shares of lag. It's turning into one of my higher dividend paying stocks on that. So Wow. Impressive, I, man. Yeah. So I probably should diversify, but we're getting pot under 30. I like it. He likes it, guys. So yeah, again, those, you know, you'll see all the, you know, screenshots of stock prices and tickers that we are looking at. But what are you doing no matter what every single week or every single month, regardless of what the stock market is doing? Are you also trying to stay consistently invested no matter what the noise is? And what other stocks to buy are there right now on your radar that you already know it's a great time to buy that stock or you're waiting on one, two, three percent price drop and then you'll start to nibble when that happens? Let us know in the comments below. If you haven't already, subscribe to this channel. Give this video a thumbs up. And anyway, Lady, what else do we need to tell these people? You're either with us or you're against us, Jack. That was Bertha Hurt and Lanny from the Dividend Diplomats over and out.